Question number 20. Some denominations teach that Jesus is not part of the Trinity, but instead is the Archangel Michael. Why do they think that Michael and Jesus are one and the same? Okay. Um, the, the, by the way, I, I don't know of, of other denominations that teach this other than Jehovah Witnesses. I mean, somebody does. Uh, you know, maybe they do. I, I don't know it, but I know that uh, they do. And uh, apart from them, people have struggled with the deity of Jesus Christ ever since the first century. Okay. And it is, and as a matter of fact, you know, even Thomas, one of Jesus' disciples, said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And if you remember, the Lord told him, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, I and the Father are one. And so I can see that it, you know, it, it's really hard to, it's really hard to understand God, isn't it? You know, I mean, we, we don't understand what it's like to be eternal, and we certainly don't understand what it's like to be a, a true trinity where there is the God, the Father, and God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, because we have nothing to relate that to. We, we just simply have to take it by faith and run with it. And sometimes that's really hard to do. And so the Bible, like I said, very plainly teaches that Jesus is um, the Son of God. As a matter of fact, John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And I know that uh, people will like to change that translation to make it say something differently, but it isn't. It is, it is what it is. And if you don't like that, then you can go down throughout the book of John and you can see that numerous times the Jews picked up stones to stone Jesus for blasphemy because he made himself equal with God. Okay, well, that's true. If Jesus made himself equal with God, and he did because he said, I'm the Father of one, then um, that would be a sin unless Jesus was telling the truth and Jesus really was it, okay? And so here we've got a, a, a problem, so to speak, and that is that if, if we can't accept that, then what are we going to do with Jesus, right? Okay, well, what we're going to do with Jesus is let's make him something else. And so let's make him another figure in the Bible Let's say Michael the Archangel. Can we do that? No, we can't. Let's take a look. Like I said, let's go back to the book of Hebrews chapter 1 again. In Hebrews chapter 1. And starting in, well, let's just start at verse number 3, okay? Okay. Hebrews chapter 1 and starting in verse 3, it says, In the past God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets in many times and in various ways, but in these last days He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, through whom He made the, the universe. Now notice in verse number 3 it says, The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. And so when you look at that verse, can't you see that Jesus is God? He is the radiance of God's glory. Okay, well, if you think about God's glory in the Old Testament, I mean, it was so much that, um, you know, people couldn't even look at it uh, or they would die. And so here is Jesus, and he is the radiance of God's glory. Okay, he is what it says here, the exact representation. All right, and so if Jesus was a subcopy of God, it would not be the exact representation, would it? Okay, you say, well, why would he be the exact representation? Well, going back to what Jesus told Philip, right? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. Okay, we can't see God in his glory, but here we see Jesus Christ. And if we see Jesus Christ, we see the Father. Now, continuing on down. Notice that it says here, after he had provided purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to them. 
And so here we're talking about all the angels, right? And Jesus is superior to them. It's not as if we've got angel and higher angel and higher angel and highest angel. It's we've got angels and Jesus is above them. Okay? And so it says in verse number four, so he became much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to them. For which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son and today I have become your father? The answer implied is none of them. Okay? But he did with his son. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. Angels? No. Jesus? Yes. As a matter of fact, he is the beloved son of God. He is the only begotten son of God. And again, in verse number six, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels worship him. Okay, now stopping right there. Who is to be worshipped? God, right? Okay. If someone or something is worshipped other than God, what is that? It's an idol. It's idolatry. That is something that is opposed to the will of God, right? Does God ever receive, ever go for worship of someone, something other than himself? Never. You remember in the book of Revelation when John uh, became so enthralled with the things that he was seeing, he started to bow down and worship the angel. And what did the angel do? Stop. Don't do it. Worship God, right? Okay. You remember when people started to come um, uh, overly impressed with the Apostle Paul, started to worship, started to call him a God, what did Paul do? No, don't do it. We're people just like you. You remember when Herod started to accept people's praise of it's the voice of a God and not of a man, what did God do? Struck him down, okay? And so here we have worship of angels worshiping Jesus. And what happens? It's accepted. Why? Because Jesus is God. And when you look at the life of Christ, there were times that people worshiped God. If Jesus was not God, he would have stopped it. But he did not stop it. All right? Okay. And so when you think about all of these things, um, you know, you kind of think, okay, well, where in the world did they get the idea about Michael? All right, this is, this is where they got it. They, uh, it's, it's really kind of a, a twisting of a couple of verses out of Scripture. Let's take a look at one of them. Let's take a look at um, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and in verse number 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 in verse number 16. Okay, it says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Okay, so this is the way that, um, you know, they are looking at it. I'm not, you know, I, I always draw my little st stick figures, right? Okay. I'm not drawing my stick figure because Jesus is by far and away more to be honored than my stick figure, okay? All right, so instead of a stick figure, I'm going to say Jesus, all right? So this is what they're saying is that with the trumpet of God, okay, I can do a little trumpet there, right? And with the voice of the archangel. He's coming again, right? Okay, why are, would you assume that Jesus would be the voice of the archangel, right? Couldn't the voice of the archangel, here's my little stick figure, be over here, you know? If Jesus is coming alone, well, that would make sense, but we know from the uh, book of Revelation, Jesus isn't coming back alone, right? Okay. And so, you know, that's just kind of, um, you know, just assuming things that you shouldn't really assume. Something else. Let's take a look at the book of Daniel. Now, if you remember a year ago, we were looking at the book of Daniel, 
And we, when we came across chapter 10 and we came across chapter 12, um, there was, uh, it was a little difficult, right? A little confusing about things that uh, Daniel saw. And what we saw was that in chapter 10, there was this idea about this um, um, prince that came to help um, uh, another prince battle against the prince of the Persia. Prince of Persia happened to be Satan. We see that another prince happens to be Michael the archangel because in chapter 12, what we see in chapter 1, it says at that time, the prince, uh, the great prince who protects your people, or excuse me, in chapter 12, verse 1, at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. Okay? And so, um, here he is this prince, great prince. His name is Michael. Um, now, you go over to the book of Isaiah. Or, excuse me, back to the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse number 6. Of course, here, you know, this is kind of a thing, uh, a uh, holiday thing, because here we are talking about Thanksgiving. Now we're going to talk about Christmas. All right, so here is a uh, verse that we oftentimes quote at Christmas because it is a prophecy of Christ. And so in Isaiah 6 and 9, it says, um, 9 and 6, I'm sorry. I was looking at that and I thought, wait a minute. Chapter 9 and verse number 6. I guess my dyslexia is catching up to me. Okay. Um, 6 and 9, or 9 and 6. Here we go. I'm doing it again. Okay. So it says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And so they say, okay, here is this expression again, a prince, right? And so here we've got this idea about Daniel. And in Daniel, Prince, oops, not Price, Prince is Michael. Okay, so in Isaiah, we've got Prince again, and Prince is Jesus. And so, you know, it just goes to make sense. Michael is Jesus. Doesn't make any sense at all, does it? You can't take something from one context of Scripture and then take it out and then put it in the context of something else in Scripture and make it go. It doesn't work out that way. Because when you take a look at uh, Isaiah 9, 6, and you look at it, it says something entirely different, doesn't it? As a matter of fact, it says the opposite. 9, 6, he will be called Wonderful Counselor. What? Almighty God. God? Wait a minute, that's not Michael the Archangel. What's the next part? Everlasting, Everlasting Father. Oh, wow, that's definitely not Michael the Archangel, right? Prince of Peace, okay? All right, anybody have any other questions on that one? <laughs>